Today we'll look at how to predict aerodynamic flutter with SimCenter 3D. Flutter, or aeroelasticity, couples aerodynamic and structural simulation models to predict the velocity at which flutter is likely to occur. Flutter can cause catastrophic damage to an aircraft. In the video, the pilot has found the critical speed at which the horizontal stabilizer is being excited by flutter. It's critical that flutter is understood to ensure flight safety across the flight envelope. Flight safety organizations across the world require airframers evaluate their designs for flutter. Today we'll be focusing on Nastran Solution 145 for performing a subsonic flutter analysis of a wing with SimCenter 3D. To perform a flutter analysis, we need both a structural and an aerodynamic finite element models. We can then couple these models with spline interpolation. Nastran supports multiple methods for predicting flutter. In the demonstration today, we'll be using the PK method. The PK method is great at predicting the first critical airspeed at which flutter occurs. We'll begin the demonstration with our structural model for the wing completed. We'll then create the aerodynamic model and link the two together. We'll then set our flutter parameters, run the simulation to identify the critical speeds, and look at the mode shapes. The CAD geometry in SimCenter 3D is fully parametric. So here if we take a look at some of the driving parameters, we can see that we're able to control the shape of the airfoil with parameters. I've already created a structural model of the wing. Here you can see a shell representation of the wing. Also we have some concentrated mass elements in each of the wing boxes that are connected to the skin with rigid elements that are created using universal connections. All right, one other thing that we need to make sure we've got before we can start with creating our arrow panels and our arrow model is that we have the analysis type set to arrow elastic. Once we have that, we'll be able to create our arrow panel. Here I'm going to use geometry to select my leading edge point 1 and point 4. The chord length from 1 to 2 starts at 1 and then goes to the trailing edge. I have some expressions in the MasterCAD geometry that we'll link to using inner part expressions in order to get a parametric representation of that chord length. So if it changes, our arrow panel will update as well. And we'll do the same thing for our edge chord length for 3. Again, going back to the master geometry and getting an inner part expression to our tip chord expression. Next we'll define the number on the cord and the span. We'll create it in a new collector. And here so that we can see that a little bit better, I'll change the color of our arrow panel collector. And that will change all of the meshes colors within it. All right, so next we'll create our flutter solution. This will be an aeroelastic analysis type, solution 145. We'll call it flutter, and we'll begin defining some of the bulk data parameters, beginning with the aerodynamic parameters. Here we'll specify our reference chord length, similarly to the way we did for our aero panel, going for our inner part expression, which we've already created. I'll go ahead and link to that. 
then we'll specify our pressure altitude and reference density can be calculated automatically from that pressure altitude. Next we'll create our aerodynamic matrix parameters. We'll specify a Mach number and reduced frequencies. All right, we'll go ahead and add that to the list. Next, we'll go to the case control and specify our flutter data. Here, we'll specify our flutter analysis method as the PK method. Then we'll specify our altitude. And here, as in everywhere, in SimCenter 3D, we can put in our values in whatever units we're comfortable. So here, I'll put in 3,000 feet. We'll calculate our density ratios based on that automatically. Then we'll put in our Mach number and our velocities. Here I'll put in those velocities in miles per hour to make it easier to specify a bunch of them. What I'll do is use Excel in order to generate a series of velocities that we'll get our results at from 20 miles per hour up to 640. So here I'll go ahead and copy and paste that right in. And then we'll specify a convergence parameter for K. All right, so that completes our analysis setup. Next we need to link our structural and arrow models together with an arrow spline. And I'd like to specify those elements and nodes in an associative fashion. And the way that we'll do that is with selection recipes. Now we have one selection recipe already for collecting those nodes. And here I'll go ahead and edit it so you can see that I've selected those points on the top of the skin, searching for nodes within a certain search distance of it. So that will collect the nodes for the arrow spline. Next, we'll create some new stacked selection recipes in order to collect the elements. We'll start with creating a proximity selection recipe, which will look at the point on the leading edge to find the nearest node. Then using that nearest node, we'll find the related elements to that node, of which there's one. And here we can see a preview of that. So that will be our corner one. I'll go ahead and call that C1 for our arrow spline definition. Next, we'll create another one for our corner two in the same fashion with a proximity stacked selection recipe going for the point at the diagonal opposite corner, getting the nodes, and then stacking that with finding the related element. All right, now we're ready to create our arrow spline, selecting the selection recipes, C1 for our corner one, C2 for our second corner, and our existing selection recipe for the structural nodes. Then we'll put in a linear attachment flexibility, and we've created our spline. Here we can see that a little bit better if I go unshaded, and I'll highlight that simulation object that we just created. So there you can see it's tied into the structural model. All right, now that we've done that, we can reuse one of the boundary conditions from our structural model where we have it fixed, where it attaches to the fuselage, and we're ready to solve. I won't pause the movie while it's solving. You can see here that it solves in about two seconds. And we're ready to take a look at our results. So here we can take a look at our mode shapes. And basically we want to confirm that we've got a good 
correlation between the mode shapes for our arrow model and our structural model. And you can see for the first few modes that we do. Next we'll take a look at our damping and frequency results as an XY plot. Here we'll take a look at a top and bottom view. We'll plot the damping and frequency in each of the two views here. And you may need to adjust the complex options to be signed and also uh, if your units are not miles per hour you can easily change them this way. But it was sticky from the last time that I made those changes. If it's not, what you can do is save your settings to a template. So now every time I create a plot it'll be signed and it will have the velocity in miles per hour. So here what we're interested in is the first damping mode to go positive. And here we can see that's mode 2. Let's plot just mode 1 and 2, damping and frequency. And here if we probe those results we can see it goes positive at 220 miles an hour. We can also see the frequency of mode number 2 is going to be 3.14 hertz. So next, if we want to take a look at what that flutter mode looks like, we need to recover the complex modes. To do that, we'll edit our flutter data velocities and we'll change the sign on the mode frequency that we want to be complex. Then we'll go ahead and solve it again. And now when we take a look at our modal results, you'll see that there's both a real and complex component to the mode. And it's mode 2 that we're after. There you can see that 3.14 hertz, and you can see what that mode shape looks like. So this will be our first flutter mode. And we can animate that. All right, then we can also plot our damping and frequencies. And these are the same that we just saw. We'll plot the damping for mode 1 and 2. There you can see mode 2 is going positive at 220 miles an hour. And there you can see the frequencies And we can see our frequency for mode 2 at 220 miles an hour is 3.14 hertz. One of the main advantages to using SimCenter 3D for predicting flutter is a fully associative simulation model. If we make a change to our geometry, we'll see how our simulation models update to stay in sync with the geometry. All right, so let's go back to our CAD geometry. And here we'll change the model by making a modification to some of our expressions that drive the geometry. So here we'll change our inner and wingtip chord lengths. And here you'll see the model will update to those updated sizes. Now if we go to our simulation model, you can see that the geometry has updated. The finite element model has an update pending. Let's go ahead and hit the update button and we'll see our structural and arrow models update. 
to conform to the updates to the geometry. And here you can see our arrow spline and constraints have all updated as well. So all we have to do to evaluate the effect on the geometry change is to solve our updated model. To maintain our original results, I'll first clone the solution and we'll call it Flutter 2 and then we'll solve Flutter 2 to see what its results are. All right, let's take a look at the XY results for our updated geometry. And we'll plot the damping for modes one and two on top and the frequency on the bottom. So here we can see if we go into probe mode that we have our flutter prediction at 260 miles an hour where our damping mode number two goes positive at 4.14 Hertz. If we'd like to see what that mode shape looks like it's going to be the same but just to confirm we can ask for our complex modes at 260 miles an hour. And now we can see mode 2 at 4.14 Hertz and that mode shape is the same as it was before just at 40 miles an hour higher airspeed. Finally we'll see how we can adjust the aerodynamic behavior with correction factors. Before we put any correction factors in. Let's go ahead and make another copy of our solution and we'll call this one Flutter 2C for our correction factors. Then we can put in our arrow element correction factor. To make it easier to select the arrow panel I'm going to hide all of my simulation objects except for my arrow panel elements. Let's turn off the simulation objects and constraints as well. And I'd like to apply a correction factor to about half of the elements that are further out on the span. And we'll put a correction factor of 0.8 on those elements. Then I'll select the rest of the elements and we'll leave those at 1. Here now to confirm that we've got the right correction factors in the right locations, we can plot the contours. And we're ready to solve. Now that we have our updated results, let's plot the frequency and damping to see the effect on the flutter predicted velocity. All right, now you can see that our damping goes positive at about 290 miles an hour and 4.1 Hertz. In addition to simulating flutter, SimCenter 3D enables you to quickly and accurately simulate all your aircraft performance requirements with a common model 
in a fully associative simulation environment. Thank you.